Hello, everybody. This is Michael Pucciarelli. In today's webinar, I'll be talking about how I use Adobe Photoshop and the camera raw in with a photograph with the black plex table. And then, you know, every artist is different. And today, I will demonstrate that. But first, going to start with Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to do Control or Command R. I'm going to reset it. The default. I'm done. Do Control or Command R. I'm going to set the default. Control Command R. I'm going to set the default. I'm going to get the three ellipses and just reset the default. So we wanted to start from scratch. I'm going to go back to the first file. I'm going to do Control Command R. The first thing I want to do is I want to set the white balance. And make sure that you see the pencil thing, not the magnification. I'm going to click on like a gray. And then neutralize the colors. And then I'm going to do the light. I'm going to bump up the contrast at about 10. And I'm going to tone down my highlights. I did the light, the color, and I did the effects where the three, the texture, three to the clarity. Curve, I know some people do an S. I want to, do, I want to work with this in Adobe Photoshop with the levels command after run an action. Color mixer, I want to leave this alone. I know there's many things you can do with it, like black and white. You can work with saturation luminance. I want to work with color in Adobe Photoshop. And the color grading, where I know you can work with midtones, shadows, highlights. You can work with the ball. But this is good to use, but for these, Photography I'm doing, I want to leave this section alone. Now the sharpening, in the past I know some people did like 120, 140, but with further research, I'd rather just leave this alone and do the sharpening at the end with Adobe Photoshop. I know there's great things you can do with the noise, but I want to leave the section alone. Now the options, where I want to have both things checked. Remove chromatic aberration, use profile corrections. I want to start with use profile corrections. It tells you the camera and lens you're using. With remove chromatic aberration, you take away color problems at the edges. So with the optics, I always want to make sure I have both of these checked. I don't want to touch lens blur because I want to use this in Adobe Photoshop with the Gaussian blur, like on a smart object or just on a regular background layer. Geometry, I just want to use EA. Now, if I decide to rotate, I'd rather do that in Photoshop. So I know there's other things you can use here, but most of the times I just use A and it helps to get my job done. I'm not going to worry about the cal calibration. I'm going to click done. I'm going to move over to the next photograph. I do control or command R. I'm going to start the color. I'm going to do the white balance. And make sure you see the pencil thing. I'm going to find a gray. 
So I'm neutralize the color. And I want to tone down the highlights. Looks better. And I want to do over here, 12. We work with the light. We already work with the color. I don't want to touch the temperature or tint. I'm going to leave that alone. In terms of vibration saturation, I'd rather just use it, you know, like the saturation later Adobe Photoshop if I increase the color. The effects. I want to use plus three. Using plus three for the texture and clarity. And I want to, like I said, I want to work on the contrast with the mid-tone slider of the adjustment layer levels in Adobe Photoshop. In terms of color, black and white, I do everything in Adobe Photoshop. I know you can, you know, work on the saturation. You could zero everything out. I do everything in Adobe Photoshop. Color grading, I know you could adopt with the midtones. I want to do everything in Adobe Photoshop. Now we could do a lot of cool stuff with this. And with the detail sharpening, I just want to do an everything Adobe Photoshop. Optics, I want to do remove chromatic operation and use profile corrections. I want to make sure both of these are checked. I want to use use profile corrections. I want to use the camera lens. It tells you, you know, the profile that it's using. I want to use remove chromatic profile aberration it removes color problems from the edges. So these, these things you want to have checked off. Lens blur, I just want to rather do that with a Gaussian blur in Adobe Photoshop, like in a background layer or a smart object. Geometry, sometimes, you know, there's no upright correction found. I don't want to work with the calibration. I want to leave the tint alone. I want to leave this alone. If I want to adjust the color. I'd rather just use a saturation hue levels adjustment in Adobe Photoshop. And then I click done. Move on to the next photograph. I want to do control or commands R. As you said, we got problems with this photograph in vignetting. We're going to try to correct this. Why we go to color. I want to find like a neutral. Okay. So we're going to color. I don't want to touch the vibration, saturation. I'd rather do that in Adobe Photoshop with the hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to see if I can, you know. <clears throat> Coming down the highlights, so it looks better. I'm gonna use plus three for the texture and plus three for the clarity. Curve, like I said, I'll just use a mid-tone slider of a levels adjustment layer. Color mixer, I want to leave alone. Color grading, I want to leave it alone. Detail, sharpening, I'd rather just, you know, like, I'd rather sharpen with, you know, like a high pass or, you know, sharpen mask from one of those filters in Adobe Photoshop. I want to make sure that remove corroboration and use profile correctness is checked. Sharpening, I want to do at the end of Adobe Photoshop. Lens blur, I'd rather use a Gaussian blur in a background layer in Adobe Photoshop. 
I want to see if I can just straighten this out. Now, I want to jump back over to effects where the vignetting. Try to even it out. Too much. This is all too too much. I just want to see if I can just even it out. And I click done. There. And now I'm going to do a new screen share. We're going to go into Adobe Photoshop. Pause on the screen for a minute. So I'm doing a new screen share. I had to pause it because of things wouldn't work right. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my actions. I'm going to run this action. What I did was I made a copy of this background layer, and then I ran. Other part of the actions is auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. And it's everything is in one action. I'm going to run this action. I duplicate the layer. And I play action, it calls this action. I'm going to run another action where since we're doing a black flex table, I'm going to delete a black signature layer. Because when I run this action, dodge and burn, what it does is I produce a layer group of burn and dodge with levels adjustments. And then outside of the groups of levels, and then I have a black and white signature. So I decided to delete the black signature and just have the white so it looked better. Do control I. The control I. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm need my brush. I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a ten percent opacity brush. So basically. When you want to quickly change the settings of brush, you create the brush and then you put it in action and the settings automatically update. And I start with a small brush, but you can make the brush bigger with the bracket keys. And I always want to use a soft round brush. 
So suppose I wanted to have a little more intense brush or a lot of more intense. And then I'm going to run my action. I'm going to click it. And the settings automatically change. Make my brush bigger. I'm going to come up here in my levels adjustment, double click on it. I'm going to click the auto. Now, there's a few things I can do to adjust the color quickly. I could do the white thing, make it lighter with the click, and do Control Z. Or I could do the black. And I could still adjust. There. I'm also going to save this control or command S. Call it demo one. I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this layer. I'm going to just do a duplicate mask. And I'm going to turn this in to a smart object. I'm going to go over here, convert into smart object. Because now what we're going to do is we are going to use a, another action to take care of the small spots quickly. And this is going to, you know, I'm not going to use that big a radius. I'm going to use like maybe, you know, 10. And this is the power of this dust and scratch is you want to um, use like you want to use a a moderately high threshold layer to make the spots go away. And then you click, you know, done. So this is done in a layer. Then I'm going to make another copy of this. Now I'm going to do select subject. Now I'm going to do select inverse. Oops, select inverse. I'm going to put this in a separate layer. I'm going to do Control J. Now, I'm going to put in Gaussian blur. There's another way you can use, you know, So we're going to be affecting this area in here. Control D. And I'm going to just put a Gaussian blur. You don't have to use that big a radius. Maybe, you know, five or four. And there's something else I can do where, um, called I find it over here. Let's see. It's frequency separation where I have an increase in radius. Where some people they have a separate high frequency layer for every like clone tool. I just like to keep everything in one layer. You want to have this not checked. Whoops. And if you want to do Gaussian blur, that's where you want to use a low frequency layer. Like if you want to make a selection and 
you put, you know, like you could do um, speckle dust and scratches or high pass or Gaussian blur. Now, I'm going to save your work. Suppose I wanted to put a frame, and I will. I'm going to go back to my I'm going to put the frame. I'm going to run this frame. I can barely see the frame, but what I'm going to try to do, I have adjustments. Or I could also go in here. I'm going to do a new screen share. I'm going to run this again. We got a green color problem. Yeah, no, I, but I'll try to fix that here. This is part of it. Again, background copy. And then the other part of the action is I do auto tone, auto contrast, and color. It's all one action. Then I come over here, burn dodge, you know? So this is the block signature. I'm gonna delete it because since we're doing black plexiglass work, it makes sense to have the white signature so it display better. And I do not want my signature upside down. Okay, now I'm gonna do this is, I'm gonna do control I, control I. I'm gonna first start with my brush where, I'm always using a soft round brush. I'm gonna go to my light painting folder because that's where all my brushes are. I'm going to start with the opacity 10. And I run the action, the brush is in the action, and the settings automatically update with it. Opacity 10, flow 100, smoothing 10. I'm going to make my brush about the size of the subject. Suppose I wanted to use a different brush. I'll go to my actions. Now I'm just going to do the opacity is five, or the, or the flow is five, the opacity is 100, the smoothing is 15. This type of brush is great for a really light brush, soft brush. It's also really super for like light, like painting a background, or just you want to paint really light.
if you feel like that, you know, control Z, you have to leave it alone. I'm going to click on this and click auto. Now, if I click on this, I'll turn it and make it white. I don't want that. I click in the black. That's too much. Where, where I just want to tone down. Now I'm going to try to do something about this part of the watch. I'm going to do. using the object select, where I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna put it in a new adjustment. I'm just gonna, you know, put it in levels. Where I'm gonna tone down this. It isn't so bright. a little dark here. Not perfect, but. And now what I want to do is I just want to make, I'm going to make a few copies of this layer. You have two copies. This one, we're going to turn into a smart object. And the smart object, we're going to put in the, the dustless and scratches. Obviously, that's too big a radius. You want to try like 10. And then you want to Look at the screen. Twenty two. You want it barely noticeable. Now, I'm going to do select subjects. I'm going to do select inverse. I'm going to do control or command J. And that's in a separate layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my Gaussian blur. This is the area that I affected. I'm affecting the background area. Another thing I could do is I'm going to run the, the action. Let's see. I'm going to find it, single filters. I'm going to run the frequency separation action. I'm going to make the a little bigger. All right. Where this is, if you want to and make sure that sample all layers is not checked.
or if you want to, um, I'm going to put a Gaussian blur. Like you want to put like a filter in a selection, you want to use a low frequency. Or if you want to do any blurs or any type of noise filter, even any. So basically, the low frequency is for your blurs, your filters. The high frequency for like the cloning. I'm going to save this as demo two. Where I'm going to create a frame for this. So basically, when I run this frame, this action, it calls two actions, the frame, and then this action is called, does the steps, and it calls the black because it's a color, does all the steps, and then it calls this action, and it's a condition, because then this is a landscape, you know, the big width actions in a call, if a portrait, the big height. where if I go to image, it automatically puts in 4,000 pixels for the longest side, which is the width, automatically. I'm going to do a new screen share. Now, this file, we're going to run the same actions. We've got some other work to do with this. We'll try to fix that. Go to my filters. So I just do the background layer and I go through this image process where all the tone, all the contrast, and all the colors corrected. Then I'm going to throw away the black signature since we're doing the white plex table. I'll move it down over here. I'm going to invert it. First, I'm going to start with the brush. And I just want to start with the soft brush. Let's run the action. I'm using a brush with opacity 10, flow 100, smoothing 10. I'm gonna make my brush a little bigger with the you know, right and left bracket keys. As you wanted to switch brushes to another low opacity. A lot of times I just use one opacity, but sometimes I just switch. 
And I'm always using a soft brush. Let the brush a little bigger. I'm gonna make sure I bring out the label. Make my brush smaller. I'm gonna save this as demo three. Now there's things wrong with this photograph where I'm gonna to try to fix it with the Adobe Camera Raw filter. A little better. There we go. Now I'm gonna come up over here. And I'm gonna not of course have that where I can make it white, I'll do that, I'll make it more black, which I do. There we go. I'm gonna save it. It's not perfect, yeah, I know, but what's going on here, whoops. Or I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to get on my light painting folder. I always want to try to start with like a 10% opacity brush where did that up there. Now what I want to do I want to make copies of the layer, two copies. Or I want to turn this into a smart object. Where I want to put this, I'm going to put the threshold here. I'm gonna use like half this radius, maybe 10, but I do wanna increase my threshold. It's too much, 22, there. Then I want to do select subjects. I want to do I could make this selection a little more fine, but I'm gonna leave it alone. So I'm gonna do select inverse. Or I'm gonna do control J. So I'm going to be affecting, I'm going to be affecting the selection outside the subject. Where I want to put a filter. I'm going to run my action again.
So that concludes how I use Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw with the Black Plex table. So if you're interested in more videos like this, but still life with using the white flex table, a black flex table or light painting, Adobe Photoshop and the equipment. There's also a landscape section that maybe consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for listening to this webinar.